the Galactic Empire was one of the largest and most powerful empires to exist within the galaxy. Yet, it only lasted a few decades as it was brought down by a small resistance group. So how powerful was the Galactic Empire? For this video, we will only be including the strengths and weaknesses of the Galactic Empire before the Battle of Endor, which resulted in the death of Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader, an event that drastically changed the structure of the remaining Empire afterwards, meaning we will only be talking about the Galactic Empire for its first 23 years. The Galactic Empire was established on 19 BBY, with Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, now Emperor Palpatine, becoming the leader. Taking control of a war-torn galaxy, the Galactic Empire was supported by a majority of senators in the Galactic Senate, as well as a majority of the population of the galaxy, who were willing to give up anything for peace and order, two things the Galactic Empire promised to deliver. The Galactic Empire emerged itself from the Galactic Republic, taking control of all its territory and quickly consuming most of the territory and assets held by the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Thus, right off the bat, the Galactic Empire possessed a battle-hardened clone army and most of the Separatist droid army. The Empire also possessed the navies of both the Republic and Separatists. In a galaxy with no opposition of equal power, this gave the Galactic Empire immense power over the galaxy and the ability to do anything it pleased. Within the first few weeks of the Galactic Empire, Palpatine launched multiple purges against any remaining opponents, which included questionable senators and any re previous Republic officers that didn't show complete loyalty to him. This eliminated any obstacle Palpatine could face within his government and military, giving him absolute control. The Empire was ruled with absolute power by Emperor Palpatine, with Sate Pestage as Grand Vizier and Darth Vader as Supreme Commander of all Imperial forces. Imperial rule was authoritarian, there was little to no freedom of speech, and dissidents were punished harshly. The Galactic Empire was actually more decentralized than the Galactic Republic. Systems were grouped into sectors, and sectors in turn into over-sectors. These were controlled by the Moths and Grand Moths, who exercised power in the disseparate regions of the galaxy. The planets of the Empire were no longer given a say in the government, but were now kept in line through fear and force. Though there was a Senate, renamed the Imperial Senate, for the first 19 years of the Galactic Empire. It held little to no power and was more of a symbol than a political powerhouse. At its peak, more than 69 million systems met the requirements for Imperial representation, and 1.5 million planets were considered full member worlds. The population of the Empire amounted to more than 100 quadrillion beings. With the most dominant species of the Empire being humans, and the Empire adopting a human high culture policy, all non-human species were treated as second-class citizens, with some species being forced into slave labor. This caused a lot of opposition towards the Empire by non-human species, which weakened the stability and control of worlds where the majority of population was non-human. The Galactic Empire had a very complex and diverse economy. Following the Clone Wars, the Empire started a process of stabilization and expansion in the economy. While the Imperial period saw some increases in state control and centralization of economic procedures, it had little effect on the galactic economy, as witnessed in the virtual non-existence of inflation. The Empire did nationalize some corporate entities, though such actions were mainly reserved for those companies that were part of or supported the Confederacy of Independent Systems, and later those who favored and aided the rebellion. The Empire did assume direct control over some of the spoils of war from the Separatists, but mostly the assets were given over to the Loyalist companies, such as the Cout Drive Yards and the Sinyar Systems. Unless acting in opposition to its interests, the Empire largely left loyal companies alone and even expanded the corporate sector to encompass 30,000 star systems. In return for the support given to the corporate sector authority, the Empire would collect the yearly stipend of 3% of the total gross product, 9% of all material, and 20% of strategic rare elements coming out of the corporate sector. However, imperial control of the economy appeared to be dramatically expanding by the Rebellion Era, by the time of Zero BBY. The Empire was taking over all commerce in the central systems of the galaxy. The Empire also dedicated its vast economic resources and quintillions of credits to expand the Imperial military and to fund new scientific developments in a wide variety of fields. 
this military buildup would eventually result in the Imperial Navy fielding millions of starships, the Imperial Army being comprised of tens of trillions of soldiers, and the creation of a vast force of stormtroopers. The Imperial Military was the military arm of the Galactic Empire, consisting of predominantly the Imperial Army and the Imperial Navy. It was responsible for carrying out all military operations throughout the galaxy, as well as maintaining order on Imperial worlds and governorships, colonies, and protectorates. Since the Empire's new order was based off fear of force, the Imperial military formed a very important part of the Imperial government. Even so, the fleet would prove somewhat insubordinate, and the tension between Coruscant government and the fleet admirals existed throughout this period creating the need for the Imperial Security Bureau to install political officers throughout the military as minders. During the early years of the Empire, most stormtroopers were just clones from the Clone Wars. However, humans were later recruited and joined the ranks. The need for the Empire to quickly expand its control over the galaxy, training an Imperial army was rushed for human recruits. This resulted in many Imperial soldiers to be incompetent when it came to fight with well-organized factions like the Rebel Alliance. The Empire also motivated its soldiers with fear, which undermined the soldiers' morale. This was very well seen with many Imperial admirals and officers who could lose their lives if they failed too many times. The design of the armor of the stormtroopers and vehicles of the Imperial military like the AT-AT were supposed to instill fear in the enemy. The Imperial Navy was composed of many powerful starships, such as the Imperial class Star Destroyer. Despite having powerful starships, many Imperial starfighters were very cheaply made. The TIE series was a great example of this. Being very cheaply made, it had no shields. The reason the TIE fighters were so cheaply made was because they wanted to mass produce them in order to expand quickly. One of the Empire's most used strategies was to overwhelm its enemies with overwhelming numbers of troops. The Empire also had over 600 dark side adepts. These were Force-sensitive beings who served the Empire, some of them being former Jedi. They were mainly used in hunting down the remaining Jedi and protecting key areas. These included the Inquisitors, Emperor's Hands, and the Emperor's Shadow Guards. The Empire's most well-known military productions were the planet-destroying weapons. These included two Death Stars. These weapon projects cost the Empire trillions of credits. In order to save credits and resources, the Empire used scrap metal from junk worlds and slave labor to build these weapons. Despite the Empire possessing these planet-destroying weapons, they were all destroyed by the Rebels due to overconfidence in the capabilities of these weapons and a lack of knowledge for the weapons' weaknesses. So in a quick overview, the Empire's strengths were its initial public support, takeover of most of the known galaxy, Increase of the military to trillions of soldiers and millions of starships, expansion of its economy, creation of superweapons, and absolute power resigned to a few individuals. Its weaknesses are the drastic decrease of public support over the years and the increase of uprisings, lack of morale in soldiers and officers, costly weapons and projects that had little usage, cheap military equipment and poor military training, and the use of fear as its main source of motivation as well as poor decisions made by Imperial leaders. All in all, the Galactic Empire was a massive powerhouse that was controlled through fear and overextended itself, which resulted in many of its people to turn against it and to support any faction that would liberate them from it, which resulted in support for the Rebel Alliance. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.